We have walked these quiet paths together since I was a young boy at your side. No, my dear father, I walk them not alone, but with you in my heart. I remember the lessons you taught, the stories you told, the encouragement you gave me to strive to be a man among men. You asked how I could be of service, but how could I be the one hundredth of the ninety-nine? It is a hard life in the village, and it is made even harder by our daily trek for water. I have labored with the others along the long, tiring path up the steep hill to fetch water every day, and then back down the hill again with their heavy load, often spilling much along the way. And your words were always with me. I began to think, could I find a way to ease their burden, not only for myself, but for the others too? Could I find a way to spare us all this daily two hours torture through heat and cold, rain and searing sun? Could I find a way for everyone to reclaim that time and put those daily two hours to better use? Finally, a solution came to me. But it was one that would first need my own big investment of time and hard labor. And I wasn't sure it would work. thought I was mad. for the first time came down the hill to us. At first it was brown and dirty, but within two days it had settled and was as crystal clear and clean as ever. People soon came to ask to trade with me. But some had nothing to trade, except some of the time they could save by not walking for water. They offered me ten minutes of that time to work for me. I gladly accepted. It gave me the time I needed to keep the furrow clean and free from weeds. So I began to profit from my hard work. Very quickly, the others began to put the hours they saved to work for themselves in things they wanted to do, and the whole village prospered. Some made fine beads and baskets and traded them for food. Some prepared and cooked food and traded that. People began to specialize in the work they were good at, and this left plenty of time for leisure too. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the end of my story, but it is not.
A few villagers became very angry when they saw that I and others in the village were getting rich from the profits we were making. They said, we are many and you are few. Why should we work for you? Uh, I was both surprised and hurt. Finally, the wise elders of the village intervened and this is what they said. Everyone has a right to benefit from their skills and labors. Everyone has the right to profit fairly from their work. This wonderful idea means we can trade just 10 minutes of our time to get two hours a day to ourselves to do whatever we choose to do. You do not have to buy water from the pond. Walk the two hours to the river and back instead if you wish. And so, my dear father, the village continues to prosper and now it is a wonderful, joyous place to live. So I ask, finally, have I earned your pride? Am I able to claim that I am the one hundredth man? Was I, as the saying says, the hope of the world made new? In truth, no, for indeed you were the inspiration. From you we have learned the lesson of profit and how it works to benefit everyone. I am fortunate simply to be your son, for you were truly the one hundredth man.